I was talking with a friend recently and I asked her, why do I feel so anxious for that guy, Lester Peltier? He's the international soccer player from Trinidad who said that he was having a relationship with Larry Reed from the Larry Reed live show. My friend told me that what I'm feeling is empathy for him because being that I wasn't born here in America, I went through my own struggles with getting my papers and I see Lester blowing up his chances of becoming an American citizen. So according to Lester, he said that he was going to go back home to Trinidad because I think he came to Florida because his baby girl was sick and needed help. And apparently Larry Reed helped with a lot of money, according to Lester. And then he said, I have to go home. And that uh, a lawyer told him or a lawyer friend or something told him that if you go home, you won't be able to come back to this country for 10 years. Well, that's how it works if you come here on a visa and you overstay your time. Or if you come here without a visa and they catch you and they deport you, even if you self-deport, right? You can't come back for 10 years. Now, if they found that you've committed a crime and you're convicted of the crime, you can't come back forever, especially if you did a felony. So according to Lester, out of his own mouth, he said that Larry Reed told him, why don't you get married so you can stay? No, they played audio on somebody else's um, show and I heard Larry Reed's voice. And let me tell you, he has a distinctive voice because he has a way that he says certain words. I'm like, yeah, that's him. And he was telling Lester, let's arrange this marriage, right? So apparently, allegedly, they arranged a marriage between Larry Reed's cousin. Now, I didn't know that girl, Latrice, was Larry Reed's cousin. I know that she was married to Larry Reed's best friend, Shamako, and they're divorced, and I think she's lesbian now or whatever. Or maybe she was always lesbian and just in a white marriage. What do they call a white marriage? One where everybody knows what the deal is, but they still get married. Yeah, so she got married to him. I've seen the marriage certificate. I've not seen the original, of course. I've seen what... Lester sent this other content creator, um, what's his name again? King Payne, official King Payne. I've screenshotted it, but I'm not gonna show it. He says you can show it, but I'm not gonna show none of this stuff because I don't wanna get sued. But on that marriage certificate, it says that they got married September the 20th, not the 20th, September the 22nd, 2022. I remember the date because that's my nephew's birthday, September 22nd. So from September 2022, where are we at right now? The ending of February, I'm taping this on the leap year day, February 29th. Happy leap year, guys. Is that what you say? So um, September is far away for 2024. So September will make two years. And when you get married to an American citizen, they'll, they can file for you right away, but they'll give you a temporary green card. And after the two years, then you have to file for the permanent. I don't know if you have to pay a fee again. You probably do because it's all about fees. And I don't know if after you get the permanent and you have a one year anniversary with the permanent, if that's added to the two years of temporary. Joe, do you think that's how it works? You don't know? You can answer. You can answer because I've asked uh, you. No, I don't really. I don't usually like people to talk in the background. I want them to be seen on camera. So I'm thinking that the two years of temporary green card and the one year of permanent green card will make three. And then you can, the person can file to become an American citizen because they're married to a citizen. So according to Lester, he wanted a divorce. How are you going to get a divorce when you only have a temporary green card, dude? Now, if the girl had waited for two years to file for him, right? We're not at the two years yet. So maybe he didn't get filed for but he's acting like he's got papers. You know, he's acting like he can travel and stuff like that. So I don't know, but I, I let other people's problem become my problem sometimes. And I'm like, oh, shut up, dude, shut up. You need these papers because you got a baby girl that's sick and needs to be treated here in America. I don't want to tell you what he says she's sick with because every time you talk about diseases in your video, they put things on the bottom. YouTube will put things on the bottom to tell you the facts about that problem. And then they don't um, monetize you, which this channel is not monetized yet, but I'm sure it will be sooner than later because some of my videos are doing well and they're getting a lot of watched hours. So I want to keep it clean. So that way, when they say you can monetize, I could just go click, 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 turn on monetization on all the videos. And I don't have to go back and watch them again to see if I said something I shouldn't have said in the video. So 
that's the one topic that I wanted to talk about. The next topic that I wanted to talk about in this video is about the beautiful Hydea. For those of you who don't know who she is, she was a beautiful young lady. She only lived to be 39 years old. She passed on February the 20th. Her birthday is June. She was born June 1984. My baby brother was born February 1984. And I remember when Hydea appeared on TV for the first time that I saw her, it was on the Mari Povich show. Everybody just remembers her from the Oprah Winfrey show because she made Oprah cry when she told her story. She was 11 on Oprah. She was like six or seven on Maury. And I remember she came on several episodes and there was this little handsome white boy that would come on with her. And I think he also had the dis-ease that she was born with. And what she was born with is the house in Virginia. Take the first letter off of each word that I just said, house in Virginia, and you'll know what it is. Okay, I'll put it here in a graphic. I can't say it. Because you can't say certain things in YouTube. It's trash day, guys. So um, the little girl was born with it but didn't know. The mother abandoned her in a Las Vegas hospital. It wasn't until she was three when the mother gave birth to another baby. And they tested the baby and the mother and found out that they had the thing. That they contacted the adoptive parents for Heidi and said, check her. They checked her. She had that, the house in Virginia. And then two years later, she had the full-blown thing. You guys know what I'm talking about. So um, she became an activist throughout her life. She grew up so beautifully. And um, I remember that it's uh, Starsky and Hutch. Remember that show, Starsky and Hutch? Paul Michael Glazer, one of the lead actors from that show. His wife, Elizabeth Glazer, had both things, the house in Virginia and later on the full-blown thing because she got it from a blood transfusion after she gave birth to her first child, which was a daughter. The daughter developed it because of the breast milk. The daughter was born without it because the mom got it after the birth, right? But got it from the breast milk. And I think they found out later when she went and had a son, the son was born with it. He's still alive. And I think the meds have it to the point where it's not showing up in his system. The last I read, I think I, think I looked them up like five years ago. And so the um, Paul Michael Glazer did lose his wife and daughter to that disease. But that woman, the, the wife, was the one that asked Heidi as parents, her adopted parents, which is her real parents for all intents and purposes, right? Um, if she could speak on the topic and that's how she became an activist from a young, young age, right? So I've seen her, you know, over um, Clubhouse and her Instagram and stuff like that throughout the years. And I was just like, oh my God, she's still alive, yeah. I don't know what happened to the little white boy because when she was on the Maury show, she wanted to marry him in a little mock ceremony because they didn't give her long to live. And I don't know if he made it or not. I can't even find the videos to prove to you that she was on the Maury show. Okay, I've looked. So anyways, RIP idea, beautiful soul, gone too soon from this earth and suffered immensely because of this mother. <sighs> okay, so next topic. I want to talk about the extreme court, not the Supreme Court. Extreme. What did we think? Because I don't know why people still have hope. For this court they've got six conservatives three of them trump put on there so you know they're going to do his bidding we only have three on our i'm democrat all right and i'm not going to make no excuses for that we only have three on our side they took two weeks before they decided yeah we want to hear this immunity case after all they know they're not going to give him no carte blanche immunity because if they do that then they'll be in deep doo-doo if he wins again because he can get rid of them right even if you're on his side, he can still get rid of you because he wants to be a whole dictator and he wants to stay in power forever. We had a prime minister that was in power forever, 33 years. A lot of people loved him. I think he did a lot of good, but I think 33 years is too long. Get out. It's too long. So he wants to be in power forever. And how is he not like bedridden already? This man can't be in great health, right? I'm talking about Trump. He can't be in great health. How is he not bedridden with everything he's supposedly supposed to have? So anyways, um, they decided after two weeks of stringing us along that we want to hear it after all. And we're not going to listen, listen to it till April 22nd. And we're going to have a decision either June or July. Oh my God. What fanciful things they've done to delay that case, that January 6th case. I don't think that case is going to come to trial before the election, but I'm not worried because he's not going to win. I keep listening. <laughs> I have a friend that I listen to it. I talk to every Friday and I listen to what he tells me because he says it with all passion and power. He will never be president of these United States ever again in life. So don't worry. He always says that. And Joe keeps saying that too. So I'm uplifted and motivated. So then that's the, 
what's that? That's the Jan 6 trial with Tanya Chutkin, right? So they've managed to delay that. Then what else? The one in Florida, I don't have any hope that that, that will ever come to trial. Although Miss Eileen, I don't know why people keep calling her Aileen. My mom had an aunt, my grand aunt. She lived to be 98 years old and it was spelled the same way, A-I-L-E-E-N, and her name was Eileen. So Miss Eileen Cannon ruled against him a couple of times recently. So I know he's for Clement. like what? Bish what? So that's not gonna come to trial either, you know? And these federal cases, those are gonna go away if he wins. So it's like, we have no hope. I think Merrick Garland was too slow in appointing the special counselor or special investigator or whatever and then when jack smith hit the ground running he already lost a whole lot of time child i think the only hope we have is with the black folks all right i think alvin bragg he's the first indictment remember he's the hush money thing people keep saying it's a stormy daniel case and who cares if he bought a hooker or whatever that's not the point it's not that he bought a hooker it's the money he used to buy it with and covered it up because the elections were coming and that's what he accused Biden crime family of doing. <laughs> I'm going to come back to Biden crime family and Lauren Boebert, okay? So anyways, um, Alvin Bragg brought the first indictment. A lot of people think his case is the weaker of all the cases, yada yada. It's a state case. It's not a federal case. So guess what? Even if he wins, that doesn't go away. And Alvin Bragg just graciously stepped back and told all the rest of them, Jack Smith, you go with your two cases. Fonny Willis, you go with your RICO cases. Yada, yada, yada. I'm going to sit back and wait and I'll set my date when you guys are done. <sighs> well, you see what's going on with Fonny. And by the way, I don't think Fonny did anything wrong. And I think if she were a white woman or a white man or even a black man, they wouldn't have attacked her the way they attacked her. They attacked her because she's a black woman. I haven't watched the case because it's going to give me too much anxiety. I want to get the summarized version from Midas Touch. I love that channel, by the way. And so I'm hoping that this funny thing is done soon and that they keep her on and that she continue to get convictions. She has four convictions already, right? So that's another dirtying the, the water. They're, they're playing dirty pool. So then... Um, Alvin Bragg, I think they've set a, a court date now for him. Is it like March 25th? Don't quote me if I'm wrong, okay? But they've set a date for him now for his case to go to trial. And I, I've said this before on one of my channels, and I don't know if I still have the video up because sometimes I, I'm messing around with Bear Pantry Talk, and I wanted to put commentary there like I'm putting commentary here, but they're not doing well there, so I privatize all those videos, and I'm just going to do a review over there, right? But over here, we're going to keep the commentary coming, and they're going to be just off the top like this, right? I don't have any teleprompter. I didn't write out a script. But in any case, Mr. Alvin Bragg is going to bring his case, and when Trump smells a conviction coming, because he's going to be convicted on that, on all these cases, he's going to be if they ever come if they ever come to uh, fruition right but once he smells a conviction he's gonna run i said that before and people thought that i meant he's gonna run for office well we always knew he was gonna try to run to get out of this stuff right well he's gonna run away to either russia or to saudi arabia and good luck trump because those two strong men dictators evil evil men putin and ben salman they know how to dispose of you real easy when they're done with you they just let somebody touch you. Bam, you're poisoned. Remember ne poor Navalny, right? Child. Now, you might say, okay, Barbara, I know that's a conspiracy theory. How is he going to escape? He's so well known. He's orange, for God's sake. Everybody can see him coming, right? And is he going to go on his own private jet? They're going to know. He has to. Joe, what do you have to do when you're going on the plane? What did they, they put a, um, not a roster, like your travel itinerary? Is that the word I'm looking for? Right? They have to have the whole itinerary going. The plane's going to fly where it's going to land. Yada, yada, right? FAA rules. And you go, child, the Secret Service is going to help him escape. This is my conspiracy theory now, okay? Everything they said here is alleged in my opinion. The Secret Service ain't all that on a bag of chips. I've had contact with the Secret Service several times. One was through a friend and one was through me having to do something with the Prime Minister of Belize back in the 1980s. The Prime Minister came here for a big thing, a four-day soiree, and my mom got me in there to sing both anthems, Belizean anthem and the American anthem, for everything the Prime Minister did. So me and Joe had to be vetted by the Secret Service. 
they question you, you show them your ID, and they give you a pin, like a pin that you would, like a tie pin. And you say, I think I still have the pin. If I find it, I'm gonna show it to you guys, all right? So <clears throat> that you put the pin, you know, it has the back part that goes in, and you pin it on. That pin can come off so easy. And once they vet you the first day, the rest of the time, they just check for that pin, and you're good to go in. How do they know I didn't give the pin to somebody else? You know, they aren't all in a bag of chips. You have to have a bachelor's, I believe, to become a Secret Service agent, but it don't mean nothing. You can have a bachelor's in basket weaving. They don't care. The Secret Service is going to help him escape. Why? Because America is not going to put no ex-president in no prison. I'm going to come back and eat my words if that happens, and I hope I can come back and eat my words. Okay? But America... And I'm going to say we, because I usually say they, because I'm not born in America, so sometimes I feel like it's a they thing. But I'm going to say we. We, America, as a government, we know how to go into other people's third world country and remove their heads of state, their prime minister, their premiers, their kings, their whatever. We know how to remove them when they're doing evil. Remember the guy from Turks and Caicos? The one that that girl, Lisa, that wears the white was married to? Remove him. They all have to run, right? Remember uh, Saddam Hussein? Remember they said he had WMDs, right? And he didn't have any? Because Bush wanted to go get him because they tried to get his daddy years earlier or whatever. But I digress. America, we know how to go into other people's country and remove them. But we don't know how to remove our own. There I said it. We don't even know how to impeach a supreme extreme court justice. Clarence, who put that hair on my soda can, Thomas, needs to be impeached forthwith. His wife was involved in the Jan 6 debacle. In the insurrection he needs to be impeached why is he sitting up there with his oh my god that man is slimy you know who's slimier than him tim scott god every time i see him grin tim scott went and got engaged to a whole white woman to try to run and be donnell trump that's that's what larry reed called him donnell trump uh vice vice president child no lauren bobert she said um She's always bashing Hunter Biden. Why did they leave Hunter Biden alone? He's not in government. No matter what Hunter Biden does, he's not in government. Donald Trump is the one that put his kids in government. I know they're running for the exits, right? Especially the daughter. So uh, who sent it to me? My sister. Lord, where's her? Okay, right here. So Lauren Boebert's son was arrested for multiple crimes, including felonies, right after she was bashing Hunter Biden and talk about what he might be doing that late at night or whatever, whatever. This boy was is, is 18. He's already a baby daddy and he's done so much. It, it's all type of credit card, steal people credit card, I shop with it. It seems like the boy even had a whole ATM machine in his house or something because they said, child, let me see if I could play this TikTok video. I hope I did. This is for um, fair use commentary TikTok. Okay, let's see if we could play some of it. So let's keep it um, it's currently almost 2 a.m. here on the House floor. Most Americans are asleep in China. They're finishing up with lunch. And um, after the videos we've seen this week, it's possible that Hunter Biden's on to his second fix for the night. It's early in the morning. Most of America is sleeping. But Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, is probably out there committing crimes. Because after all, he's part of the Biden crime family. She made this tweet. No. If... I don't know how Biden can have a whole crime family and be that dark Brandon, right? That they, they're saying, if he's also cuckoos, because that's what they're saying. He's gone. He's demented. He don't know nothing. He's a whole clone. So how, how can he be both? That I don't understand. Let's go on. Yesterday, 4.30 in the afternoon yesterday, she tweeted for the umpteenth time about the Biden crime family. Now let's see how it's going. Some breaking news. As we learned, Colorado Congresswoman Lauren Boebert's son was arrested today and is currently in custody in Garfield County. 18-year-old Tyler Boebert is facing a number of charges, including criminal possession of a financial device, first-degree criminal trespass, criminal possession of ID documents, ID theft, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Help. Okay. Help. I can't pause it. Criminal possession of a financial device. What is that? I'm saying the boy had a whole ATM in his house. But it could be one of those things that you put on top of the phone to swipe the credit cards. That's probably what it is. Cora! To the kaya, chamaka! So anyways, this boy has a horrible person for a mother, while Hunter Biden had a decent person for a father. Because you know the mother died young in the car crash, right? 
all this theft. Why? Why? Remember, remember, remember who Lauren Boebert is, right? The one that got felt up in the theater by the man and she was on camera and she threw a big fit and tantrum and treat the people who work at the theater bad and then they brought the video. That's who Lauren Boebert is. Anyways, good luck Lauren Boebert and your son, all right? Because I'm petty. So I'm taking my salt for the day, my Celtic sea salt. Every time I see this, I want to say Celtic because of the basketball uh, team. But this is what I take for my health. And I take about four granules. I don't know if you can see it, guys. So these are all the topics I've had for today. We talked about Lester, Peltier, Hydea, and about the extreme court and what they've done for Trump, trying to delay these court cases but the fact that I'm unaffected and not anxious for nothing because no weapon that they form against us as a society will prosper if you like this video thumbs up for me go ahead and share it out of course I look forward to your comments and don't forget to subscribe to this channel because we're on our way to being monetized we just need like 3500 more watched hours all right bye guys